As you probably would expect, uh, GB News has been looking quite keenly at the migrant uh, sinking yesterday, and it's approached a uh, a member of the uh, British Patrol, um, and and I think it's worth having a look at this because uh, uh, the uh, as I said, the finger of blame seems to be pointing in the direction of. Unfortunately, France. yes, the French often uh, escort these people to the uh, middle of the channel and they'll call us up, they'll call the UK Border Force up and say, hello, chap, we've got a dinghy here, they don't want us to rescue them, they want you They, they want you to rescue them, so could you come and get them, please? Um there's a lot of detail to drill into here, and I find this fascinating. So the people being rescued have a choice who they're rescued by. This incident was just four miles from the French coast. And my next question is, four miles from the French coast, A, why didn't the French turn them back? It was clearly dangerous, choppy waters, and clearly the craft was overladen with passengers. And secondly, why did British vessels go so deep into French waters to perform a rescue and then bring people back to Dover? Well, that's something that we're going to have to wait and see, see the answer to that, because that does seem a little bit strange. Mm. What I do know was that the French were also rescuing people off um, Dunkirk yesterday. Mm. They rescued another 59 off Dunkirk yesterday. Mm. Now, whether this was exactly at the same time or not, I don't know. But the French will only only rescue people if the people on the boat say they want them to. The French interpretation of the law of the sea is different to that of the UK. Um, in, in, under the French interpretation, the people have to say they want to be rescued. So what you have is this ridiculous situation this whereby the, the French will escort them to the middle of the channel, them saying that they don't want to be rescued, and then a, a metre over the international line, they'll be saying, we want to be rescued by the Brits. Ludicrous. I think anyone hearing that is just going to be so shocked because we are paying the French government... £500, what, £500 million. million pounds ..to help stop the boat crossings, but it would seem that, uh, when it actually comes to it, the French are helping these small boats across the Channel. What the French are doing is that the, the money that we've given them, um, they're putting into their beach patrols. So they've upped the number of um, French police officers significantly over the, the 60 mile part of the French coast that the French, the, the migrants are coming off to uh, try and stop them getting in the water. Unfortunately, once they're in the water, the French. Uh, aren't quite so helpful. And, and this will continue. This will continue. You will see more tragedies until the French um, amend this view. But they won't, because it's not in their interests to. Kevin, this will make, be making many people listening and watching GB News today tear their hair out in frustration. £500 million. Yesterday was the fourth busiest day of 2023, even after the loss of life in the channel. The craft kept going out into perilous seas. Um, the evidence was gathered by a British fisherman, um, a guy called Matthew Coker, looked at the GPS locations of the ships. Very easy to ascertain that clearly these vessels were being escorted. But I want to ask you again, because I'm, I'm really stuck on this detail, why, oh, why did the RNLI go right into French territory four miles from Calais and then bring people back to Dover? It's, it just beggars belief that £500 million isn't better spent returning people in danger who've gone overboard, who are in danger of losing their lives and indeed did lose their lives. It's, it's not the most um, prudent use of time to return them to Calais. To Dover? No, it, it, it isn't. And... Um... The RNLI went in, in because they were the only vessels um, that were there and that were available to actually help out. The French had deployed some vessels, but they needed more. And the lifeboats were, our lifeboats were actually on the channel. So it was fairly straightforward for them to get in. 
Now, look, your, your question is very relevant. Why did they bring them back to Dover? Why didn't they take them into Calais? And that I just don't know. I mean, do you have a, a hypothesis? Well, I, I understand they were quite serious cases that the RNLI picked up, um, and including stretcher cases. Mm. Um, and and I, I don't know. I just do not know why they took them in. Mm. I would have thought it would have been quicker to take them into Calais or Boulogne, but um, it, it may have been quicker to bring them back to the UK. I really don't know. But as you can see on your pictures, they were stretcher cases. It just seems to me, you know, if, if you're four miles from one country and, what, 21 miles, 17 miles from another country, then the four-mile country is nearer. And that's not only a case of politics or whose responsibility this is, but in, in, in the case of getting them the most urgent medical attention, surely France is nearer. I just don't understand. I'm sorry to go on about this, Kevin, but I, I cannot get my head around why that choice no. was made. And I can't either. I, I don't. I don't know the answer because it doesn't. It, with what you've said with the sums, it doesn't seem that the UK was the best place to bring them. But I really don't know the answer. I don't know why they wouldn't have taken them into Calais. Mm. Um, I can only only think that the French said no. But I, mean... I think um, I, I want to, I want to pause it there slightly because uh, the story of the uh, French failure to rescue the migrant boat in the channel yesterday reminds me of a story on the 22nd of November last year when there was a question about under whose jurisdiction the migrant boat was, a dinghy packed with migrants which sank in the channel on uh, November the 24th, actually, resulting in 27 deaths. 27 deaths. Um... And uh, it's um, it's extraordinary, quite extraordinary. Uh, in, 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 in fact, it was twenty uh, seventh of the twenty fourth of November, twenty twenty one, and and there was an investigation into this, which took nearly a year, um, and the documents suggest that the French Coast Guard repeatedly failed to respond to distress calls sent from French territorial waters, backed up by GPS coordinates. They lied to migrants by claiming it was sending a boat that never showed up. When the, boat, when the migrant boat did finally reach UK waters, the French contacted the British, but never told them that the boat had been in distress for hours and was sinking. As a result, the British prioritised Another three boats in distress, saving 98 migrants sat in, that night. And they got to the dinghy, which had sunk slightly too late. Um, so uh, the UK rapidly dispatched its rescue boat, the Valiant, to the area. Um, they had asked the French to send its rescue cra craft, uh, Le Flamand, uh, which was nearer to the zone, but the French failed to do so, later claiming that the boat was engaged in another rescue operation. And uh, it, it, it is extraordinary that um, we're in a situation where it, it mirrors almost precisely the sort of nonsense uh, that occurs in the Mediterranean between Greece and Turkey and Italy on a, on, on a weekly basis possibly even on a daily basis. And it's about responsibility. And yet we have given France money to do to, to look after this territory. And they don't seem to be doing that. Uh, I, I think, as I say, this is something that requires an international response. And if we don't have an international response, we are failing in our duty as human beings. This is this goes beyond what is legally right. It goes to the point about what is morally right. And I think we are looking very grimy indeed. <laughs>